Hey there, it's Trucker Wayne with Driver Solutions. How's everybody today? We are going to dive deep into some weight distribution on a flatbed, right? I, I did this on my other page, want to do it on this one, show you guys that I do more than just the inspirational things and I actually do know how to truck. Uh, one of the things in the six years, almost six years I've been driving, five and a half, uh, one of the things I've prided myself on is over 200,000 miles flatbedding, and I've never had to go back to the shipper to get some uh, product moved because I screwed up on the weight distribution. My record was broke last week, and uh, if it was going to break any week, it would have been last week because that was one of the bad, worst weeks that I personally have had in years. Got through it, much better week already. Heading to Arizona, it's been a great ride. Beautiful day here in New Mexico, as you saw here up near the top, near the Continental Divide, having a great day. But today we're gonna to talk about weight distribution. If you're dry vanning, which I've done, we all know that you can move your tandems in the rear, right, and distribute some of the weight. Now don't let all this, it's gonna get into some jargon here, that's why we're going deep into the woods. Don't let it bother you too much. Don't let it scare you away because you, after a while you get used to this and it becomes a challenge. I personally have come to really enjoy it. Can't move my tandems in the back there. So I can still only do 34,000 in the rear. Still the same thing as dry van, 34,000 in the drives. Steer 12, 12, five, but you go 12, 34, 34. We all know that. That's 8,000, they'll let you go 12,005, but then you gotta take it off the front, right? Or the back, whatever you wanna do, but it all adds up to 80,000. With this load in particular, it's very important because I go into the shipper with a half a tank. I have a 200 gallon tank. Uh, so it's really important when I go in with 100 gallons, that's 800 pounds. Now, how do I know that? It's important because diesel fuel for every pound, I'm sorry, for every gallon, it's eight pounds, very important. You go in with a half a tank, try to get legal, do your thing. Here's the thing, I still have 100 gallons in there, right? If I have enough weight and distribution, I can put another 100 gallons in there, but that's another 800 pounds that will affect a heavy load like 48,000 if it was 48 true thousand pounds, right? That's really important to know. So every gallon of diesel is eight pounds. It's good to know when you're flat bedding and you have a 200 gallon tank. So you go in, you go in with a half tank, do your thing. Here's the thing, guys. Um, one of the things is when you can't move your tandems, this trailer, I've only had it for two weeks. There's a couple things important on an older trailer like this one. And why is it important? Because the other one that I had was not brand new, but it was uh, lighter, aluminum. And I could actually put 50,000, my lightweight, my lightweight with nothing on there was under 30,000 pounds, which meant a light aluminum trailer. I could, if everything was perfect, I could have hauled 50,000 pounds. It's a lot. And uh, when, you know, and here's the thing. If you're someone that wants to complain, why would somebody put 50,000 pounds on there? That'd be too hard to distribute. We worry about, I personally worry about my miles. Why wouldn't they worry about poundage? 2,000 pounds is a lot over every day, every week, every month, every year. They're a company, they're trying to do business, I'm trying to do business. So don't get upset with these new trailers if you're trying to distribute, you just gotta become good at it, right? Well, this older trailer, my heavyweight is pushing 32,000 pounds. It's quite a difference, right? That means too is my weight that I can do on this older one, it's about 48.8. There's six coils up here, six coils. It's supposed to be 48,000 pounds. I'll tell you a few things why I know it's not exactly 48,000 pounds. I told you we're gonna go deep into the woods here, but there's six coils. When I showed up on Saturday, there was a few things. When I had to go back, there was a combination of my mistakes. As I've gotten older, I've tried so hard to uh, admit to my mistakes and I made a few there because I didn't follow my checklist. Also, I was given some bad uh, advice as far as uh, what all that weighed, right? So basically, and I'm gonna just spin around here one time, but a be just beautiful day. I mean, here you got the sun behind me there, how nice it is, but I wanna stay on the trailer to tell you what's going on. So basically, um, when I got there, I was told there were six coils, 8,000 pounds a piece, easy easy money, man. 8,000 8, pounds a piece, six coils. I know then pretty easy math. Um, you know, with the empty weight, I don't want to go much over 21 on, on the uh, front there, right? On the rear axle. I'm sorry. You got the rear axle there that I can go up to about, I think it's 28,000 pounds. The uh, drive axles, I got a lot going on, man. I that just come right out of my mouth. 
<laughs> the drive axles, I don't want to go over 21,000. So if they're 8,000, you got six coils. Pretty easy math. You got two coils that you want to get up on the front. Now, the third coil, there's six of them. The third coil, if they were all 8,000 pounds, you want to get that and split that weight. On most of the newer trailers, splitting that weight is right on that light right there. I mean, you split it. They've gotten really good. Um, they know how hard it is for us to, you know, to do all these calculations. You split that uh, third one, so you've got eight, eight, four. I'm going to be good. Then you got three in the back, 24. You split the four as 28, 6,000. You're good. Everything's good. 34, 34. You know, if you're at, I got about 800 pounds to work with. So, you know, you know it's, you, you're going to be close. When I got there, one of the things that I was having trouble with was I've always worked with the combination of what I do on my math, which is pretty good because I've never had to go back. And I also work on poundage in the truck. If I can get it to about 69, um, the combination of getting the 69 PSI in my math, that's why I've never had to go back. This trailer is giving me different poundage up there. One of the things I did not do, I did not do, should have. I should have like i said it was just a plethora of problems <laughs> is check the uh, gauge here everything's working nothing's broke nailed 69 there after i was legal i checked it out on there but uh you know one of the things i've always done it in the truck right well it wasn't giving me 69 so i kept having the high low driver moving i'm really trying to work trying to get my 69 i couldn't figure out the math wasn't working i left had her push everything back when we pushed everything back i kind of had a feeling i actually had to strap it i had to tarp it and uh, when I left, I, and I sent an email out to the office saying, I don't know if I'm legal. And sure enough, I got there, weighed myself, and I was not legal. I was 35.8 in the back. So 1,800 pounds over, right? I'm like, okay, we got issues. Now I gotta go back. My streak is broken. I can't move 1,800 pounds by moving chains around and everything else. So, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, I gotta go back. So when I went back um, on Monday to get it, the thing is when you do go back like that i had to take my tarps off i had to unstrap i had to redo my tarps back up and then get it back up there after the product was moved here we're going to get into the deep woods with talking about weights and everything this is where i think it's interesting when i got in there he looked right away and he's like you're too far back i said i know that let's get past that there are some mistakes made i never try to throw a high low driver underneath the bus too i'm there i'm just back there let's let's fix it I've got the weigh scale ticket with me. I knew that I had to move that middle. Um, I had it. I had a. Okay. By the way, by the way, when I weighed out, I was 35.8 in the back, but I was 29.4 in the front. That should tell you right away. Some bells should be going off because I can only carry 48.8, right? So that tells me something. These coils are not 48,000 pounds. They're more like 46, which is good. I never complain about being under. If it's over, then you got some issues. But I know now when I total gross was almost 77, I can only carry 48. So they're not, this, this is probably more like a 46, 45,000 pound load. I also found out from the guy that was reloading me that they're not all 8,000. Okay, now I got, I got some bad, uh, bad, uh, some bad information. Also, I, it's up to me. I'm the captain of my ship, guys. I've been out here enough. Um, I just took the person's word that it was 8,000 per one, but it wasn't. One was 69, one was 68, one was 79, couple, couple maybe two or three were 8,000. The one in the middle was 8,000. So that added to my problems because I can't do good math if I don't have the exact poundage and I should have checked myself. I really should have. I ended up going back because I didn't check myself, but we'll get past that, right? So when we got up there, um, the high low driver wanted to do some of his he's like hey we could put 69 to 7,000 7,000 up front you'll be good he was not wrong he was not wrong that's what he would have done on a Monday I was there in a weekend he is not wrong what I didn't want to do was I already have you know we are working with the equations here I already know the main equation is all I got to do is move 1800 pounds why well, start putting different coils in order keep them the same order that I want it to, right? Same order that it's on here. I know I've got to move my 8,000 pounds. I wanted to move it two feet. The pallet's about four feet. So every pallet, every foot is about 2,000 pounds. So I'm gonna move it, and I did. We moved it two feet forward. Should have dispersed about 4,000 pounds. And I'll tell you why I figured out where my center point is on here too, because it's not at the light. So he agreed with me, but he still wanted to do it his way, but it's my thing. So I said, let's just stick with the equation. I have my ticket. Let's just push it forward. We did that. 
I uh, re-strapped it, re-tarped it. A lot of work because uh, I failed on many things and they had wrong weights when I got there. A lot of work, but hey, it is what it is, right? Got a great load running across the country. So basically when I went to, uh, when I went and um, did the ticket again, right? And I re-weighed, whoo, I was close. 33,820. All right, now I moved it two feet. Now I know that told me something else right there too. We're going deep into the woods here, man, I told you. So that tells me something, right? I, I moved it two feet. If I moved it two more feet, the entire coil would have been up there. So that's telling me with it only moving that little bit, I know now, I know now that my center point is not the light. It's not the light. My center point, I had an older trailer when I first started this, the center point was about a foot back. My center point now I know is about a foot forward. It should have, it should have went 4,000. I had about 5,000 pounds to work with. I was doing two feet, 4,000 pounds, but it only moved at about 2,000 pounds. So I know on my next heavy load that my center point is about one foot above that light. So yeah, it's, now it may be coming across, I've been doing this for years. It may be coming across as um, a little bit too technical, but if you're ever having issues, you can come back to this video and you can say, okay, Wayne was doing this and, 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 and working out calculations and stuff like that. You can, you can write down what every pallet weighs. You know how many. The first thing you should do, by the way, before you ever show up at a ship or two is get your empty weight and then figure out. So you know when they ask you that you know what you're talking about. And they'll ask you what your empty weight is. Then you can also tell them exactly how much poundage that you can put on the drives to get to 34,000. Let's say it's 21,800 pounds and you know that and you tell them that. And if they're good and they know their weights and they're not trying to cheat it, they can put 21.8. I've been to places, they put 21,750 and they nailed it. And I did my math, I'm just not letting them do it. But as long as you know exactly how much weight you can have on each one with your, after your empty weights, then you're good to go. Hopefully you didn't get too bored by this, but uh, this is something where a streak of mine was broke that I was personally very, very proud of. Um, you know, it's kind of, if it was going to happen, if it was going to happen, it was going to happen last week. But like I said, it's already Wednesday and it's great. New Mexico doing my 30 minute break. It's done. I'm going to head out, deliver tomorrow and then go somewhere else. So uh, it, it's been a good week already, way better than last week. So this is Trucker Wayne with Driver Solutions with the positive path to trucking success. Check me out at www.truckerwayne. Wait, let's try that again at www.truckerwayne.com and check me out on Facebook. I'm also at uh, Trucker Wayne In Depth, and I am out.